Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to start on a multi-part series on multiple logistic regression. This is one of the important features or hallmarks of doing data science stuff. So what's really cool here is the data set I'm using is Kratom Sales. I think I posted this in Kaggle a couple months back. And uh, so we're going to pull this in and I'm going to walk you through everything. Now this today we're going to just do the exploratory data analysis part. We're going to load in the data, look at the data, and see what kind of insights we can see from this data. So let's first put this data in, right? So that's this line right here, and we have it in there. Now, once we have this in there, this is going to a uh, data frame called Test Data One. So if I wanted to open this up, I'd have to go into my data frame, and let's find that in there. Test Data. Oh, let's open this up a little bit more. There it is, right there. So I click on this. There it is, and it shows you that we have week number, date, year, the year, um, total sales transactions units. Average T is average temperature. We have a ranking, which I think is one all the way through, so that's basically meaningless. And then we have violent crime stats for that store, the local area. And then we have a ratio and day type. And day type means A, lower crime, higher sales, and B would be higher crime, higher sales. Now you're saying, well, how can you determine crime for that. Well, we have another process that I posted on here, correlations and uh, another random forest one in my other videos that shows you that we have a correlation, a positive correlation between sales and violent crime for this store. So as violent crime goes up, the sales of Kratom uh, products, which would be your teas and um, I don't know, powders and lozenges maybe, I have no idea. But those products go up in conjunction with that in a positive manner. So uh, being that we know that, let's go back to our code here and start our exploratory data analysis. So first, we already know that our Y variable in this case is going to be day type. Um, I worked this for another one where it's supposed political party, but let's just put down day type here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have to establish does it have bias. So let's take a look and make a table of that particular variable right so let's run this and there we go see how close 29 is to 30 we have about the same number in both so there's really not a skew now if you saw 60 in one and two in the other we have some serious bias that we would have to take into account here or possibly use a different variable okay so next step is we want to check for NAs NAs are your incompletes or your missing data so let's take a look at that by running the summary command instead of the table command we run this and here we go. Let's open this up a little bit so you can see what's in there. And when we run the summary command, it will show you at the very bottom of each column the NA. So see, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, all the way through. I think everything basically has an A. Yeah, every single row has one NA. So being that we have NA, let's go back up here. And it says, what? If there's NAs, then you run this. This is NA.omit. Okay. And we remove those. So we do that. And we just hit control enter because we're in our studio. And then once we're done with that, let's go back and run the same summary thing again. Just highlight, control and enter. And there we go. Oh, look. See, the NAs are gone. See how quick and easy that was? So then once we're done with that, we want to check the distribution of our variables. Are they distributed in a, uh, with skewness? Are they finite? So let's go and take a look at that. So first, let's take a look at this STR command, right? And let's run that. What does that show us? Okay, we have, as you go down this list, let's bring this up so you can see a little bit better. You can clearly see we have integers, three integers, and the rest are num numeric except for the last one. The last one is factor, but look at it closely. So it's not only factor, but it's factor with three levels. Now, being that that is our Y independent variable, we're good. I, that can be a factor, and that's fine for uh, this multiple uh, logistic regression. So... But the problem is that we know we got A or B days, right? Well, this says factor with three levels. See it right there? Factor with three levels. Well, what that means is we've got A and B, and see right before it, we have blank. We do not want, the blank is right here in case you couldn't see it, right there. We do not want to have a factor of blank. It's going to make all of our data look weird when we graph it and stuff. So we have to remove that. So what we're going to do next is to remove the extra blank level. See this right here? What we're going to do is this line of code right here. What we're going to do is just that one column, um, day type, we're going to go and factor it, just like this. And what it will do, this will do 
and we'll put it back into the same row or the same column. This will remove that extra blank factor. So let's do that and show you. Now, if we run the same STR against it again, watch what happens. Bam, factor with two levels. It's correct, just A and B. That's what we want. Okay, so we have that now. Next, we're going to get into the cooler parts of uh, exploratory data analysis where you can actually visualize stuff, right? So what we want to do is start looking at this stuff. And the first one here, let's just run this and I'll show you. It's, it's going to be uh, this code right here, but let's just run this so you can see what it is. And let's actually bring it up a little bit bigger so you can really see what's going on here. There we go. It has to be the right size. If it's too small, then the little uh, bars won't show, and then it's meaningless. Okay, so this little bit of code here, I'll open up so you can see it, takes all of the columns, right, and shows us the frequency in each of the columns. So you can quickly see by looking at this at date Y, see it right here? is finite. You have either 2017 or you have 2018. You have nothing in between, right? And you have uh, total sales, right? Which is normally distributed, okay? You have some skewed things like units right here. See how it's all to the left right there? And rank is finite, but it's a little bit skewed to the left. So upon looking at that, we can get some ideas of if we're going to use things. So I'm going to stick with total sales. That's not skewed, so I don't have to worry about that. These two, I would have to worry about that. I'm not. I'm going to deal with total sales. I'm going to deal with average temperature, which looks normally distributed, and violent crime, which is a little bit skewed to the left, but it's pretty. It's still got a good number there, so that's fine. I'm going to deal with those three more normally. So let me open this up so you can see the code. Okay. And this is the code I just ran. So you can see what it is. Par is the command to go and uh, divide up your screen so you'll see more than one graph return. And in this case, you saw that I have nine graphs in there. So that's why I have C3, four. Okay. And so that will give me actually 12 openings. And let's see. if I See how it says margin is too large. Let's open it back up. Actually, there's 10. So that's why I use that. I'll, if there was nine, I would use three comma three. But there's actually 10 here, so I've got space for two more if I want. If I had two more variables, okay. But that's how that works. And so if I take this and let's shrink it down so you can see the code again, okay. So this is the actual code to show that for all of the columns, okay. And then next, let's do the same kind of idea, same concept, except we're only going to have a few graphs this time. And I want to focus. Remember, I just told you I want to focus on total sales, violent crime, and average temperature. So what we're going to do is we're going to run these three, right? Make sure we got them all selected here. Enter. Now, let, yeah, obviously that looks like crap right now, but let's pull that out so you can really see it. Okay? Now, what this is showing you is type A and type B of the, of the day, right? B has higher crime. A has lower crime, right? But we're looking at total sales, violent crime, and average temperature. You can clearly see that this is B over here and this is A. So as sales goes up, there's a much higher propensity for it to be a B type day than an A type day. As sales goes down, there's almost 100% possibility or probability that's an A type day. And at the very high end, it's almost 100% possible probability of being a B type day. So we know that that's good. We want to look at that. That backs up what our thinking is here. And then on top of it, we have uh, violent crime showing the same thing. On a day type A, it's lower. On a type B, it's much higher. And then also we have the temperature. The temperature on a type A day is here and in a B day is here. So you can clearly see that there is more B day temperature. It's not as much of a showing as these two, but it's still there because there's much more uh, or more um, higher temperatures on B than on A. And you can see the line would actually be somewhere at here to be 50%. And clearly, there's more B than A. Now, let's close this up a little bit so you can see the code right there. Okay, there's the code that I just used. All I'm doing is plotting them against each other. See, day type, total sales, for, and then it just says the data is the original test data one. Now, let's go to the next one here. Let's bring this down a little bit here so you can see that's going to be the next day. I'm not going to cover creating training and testing samples, or, uh, sample sets today. I'll cover that in the next video, but I want to show you this one right here. This is the box plots, and this is pretty cool, too. This is where you can start getting some insights on top of what you just saw. So let's run this, 
and again it starts with that par m fro which gives you in this case three three by three because I'm gonna have nine graphs here you'll see it in a second here let's pull that out so when you look at this what you can see is I've plotted all of our columns against the y uh, dependent or independent variable so um, in this case you have uh, a and B right and you have the week number right date Y, which is your year, total sales. And what you're looking for is differences between the two in the A and B. So like for instance, this one here, rank one, really doesn't show anything significant of anything that we could care about in there. Okay. But look at violent crime. Look at the difference. See, it shows you the range. Like there's one outlier here and there's a little bit of range here, but the vast majority, it's right in there. And then look at this, the vast majority, it's a bigger swath, but much higher up. So clearly you can see right here that Days type B have a much higher violent crime statistic than type A. Now, you can also look at the ratio, which is higher in B than in A. But let's look at some other things. So let's look at the temperature. Where is temperature in here? There it is, right there, average temp. You can see a little bit of, see, this is where I was showing you the other one. It's, there is some difference, but it's not as big as violent crime. But there still is more B days than A days by temperature. So that's interesting. Then you look at units. Clearly you have more on B than an A. And then you do have some outer liars. It shows you how the outer liars look. And then you have transactions. You got some outer liars up here, but the vast majority is still much higher than here and than an A day. And same with total sales. So we're going to stick with the big ones, which is remember, we want to stick with total sales because these two might be skewed. We found that earlier. And so we're going to stick with total sales average T and violent crime okay so going further we're going to delve deeper into those and see and we're going to see a lot more about those if we go back here let me open this up so you can see the code again we did a box plot where if you see this going down with week num date year total sales etc then there's the uh, little squirrely sign and then you have day type right and then we put the Y label and the X label, okay, so that we have them correctly situated. Then the color could be anything. I picked light blue, but it could be pink, green, red, blue, whatever you want. And then, of course, the data is the original data set, which is test data one. Later on, you're going to have to pay attention to this because we'll actually have test data and training data, okay, based off that. Um, but I'll go over that and it won't be confusing. So this is how you get to this. This is where you'll end up with is some cool insights. Just off this video alone, you can already start pulling some insights on this. Okay. And then the next uh, video, we're going to go into uh, creating training and testing sets. And then we're going to go into actually creating our model and doing more testing and uh, more testing and more testing. And you're going to see in the end some really cool stuff with this. All right, thanks again for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, what you like, what you'd like to see in some future videos. Thanks again, and have a great day.